This video is sponsored by MPB. I bought another camera recently and I thought I would make this video not so much to talk about the actual camera, although I will tell you what it is and why I bought it because I know some people find that stuff interesting, but more because I wanted to share with you my thought process around purchasing more camera gear, how I think about it and how I make sure in the long term that I'm thinking more about the photography than I am about collecting cameras. So the camera that I got is the Sony a7C and the reason I bought this is because if you've watched this channel you'll know I'm on an endless quest to work out how small I can get my gear that I travel with but without any compromises that I can still do everything I need to do. I shoot stills as much as I shoot videos so whatever I take with me needs to be able to do both. The great thing about this is it's one of the smallest full frame cameras on the market and it is great at both videos and stills. It has a 24 megapixel sensor in it, which I find to be that real sweet spot. If you've got more megapixels than that, you can run into trouble with video. If you have less megapixels than that, you might be making some compromises when it comes to the stills. But 24 right down the middle really works well for me. And this sensor is exactly the same sensor as the Sony a7 III's, which I'm very used to and do a lot of other work on. So I'm very familiar with the actual sensor, how it renders colors, what picture profiles I can use when I'm filming and all that kind of stuff. So it has the flip out screen, which the a7 III didn't have for me. That means that I can uh, film myself in a hotel room talking about some topic for a video while I'm traveling. I used to have to set the camera up on a tripod when it was the a7 III, line the shot up and sit where I thought I should sit and just hope that I was framed correctly, which could get a little bit frustrating. So my little kit now when I'm trying to travel light is just the Sony a7C. I take three lenses with me, the Sony 35 1.8, the Zeiss 55 1.8, and this, which is the Tamron 28-75 2.8, which is a lightweight um, zoom with 2.8 in it. It's, it's far lighter than the Sony equivalents and all the rest of it. And honestly, I probably wouldn't use this lens for stills, but for video, it's great. It's the lens that I shoot almost everything on for video, and it's, it does a really, really great job. So with those three lenses, I can shoot day or night with those fast apertures on the primes on the street. Doesn't matter, there's no compromise there. This 55 is amazing for portraits, so I can shoot all the portraits that I wanna shoot on the go, and I can shoot anything video with this lens. So that's why I picked up the a7C and why it's right for me. And you've already seen sample footage from this camera in the intro to this video. All that B-roll was shot on this little camera just a few mornings ago on the coast. And I will put some photographs at the end so you can sort of see. I, I took it down to London with me recently and shot some street stuff and some night stuff. So you can see the quality that it puts out. But let's talk about buying cameras in general. I didn't realize that my attitude to buying camera gear might be a little odd or out of the ordinary until I was talking to my friend Jeffrey the other day and telling him the story about five years ago of when I went down to the camera store, I took all my Canon and all my Fuji gear that I had at the time and I sold it, got the money to be able to buy a much more compact Sony system, which is the system I still use today for most of my work. I actually made a video about it, which a lot of you watched, and it was a day where I took down three bags worth of gear, selling maybe four bodies and 10 or 12 lenses, and I gave it all over the counter, went to the coffee shop, and I had no cameras in the world, which was a very odd feeling for a photographer. And then I went back, and with the money that they gave me, I bought two Sony a7s and four lenses, which was the kit that I wanted to be able to travel around with just in one backpack to be able to do all the stills work and all the video work that I do today. 
What I didn't tell you in that video, and what came as a huge surprise to my friend Jeffrey when I told him, was that until that day, I had never used a Sony camera before. In fact, I hadn't even really handled one. And Jeffrey's question to me was, how did you know it was the right choice then? How did you know if the ergonomics were right, if the feel of the camera would be right, and whether it would be a good fit for you? My response to him was that I honestly don't think about that sort of stuff. I'd done my research online and I knew that that camera was the right tool that I needed to do the stills and the video work that I needed to do on the go. And things like ergonomics and menu systems and the looks and the build quality and the feel of the camera in the hand are sort of irrelevant to me. I didn't think this was such an unusual way to approach purchasing camera gear, but his response got me questioning, why do I think about this in such a pragmatic, perhaps unromantic way? And looking back, I think I developed this mindset around purchasing cameras to avoid three very specific traps that I used to fall into regularly at the start of my photography journey. Trap one was spending too much money on fancy camera gear, probably money that I couldn't justify at the time, thinking that buying expensive cameras would make me a better photographer. But after making those extravagant purchases, I learned a very valuable lesson. You can take awful photographs on amazing cameras too. And instead of thinking that getting that better camera will make us a better photographer, what it might actually do is highlight how much we still have to grow. Because when you stick that amazing glass on the front of a sensor with super high resolution, there is nowhere to hide your mistakes and your out of gear excuses. The flip side of that coin is that you can take amazing photographs on very simple cameras. So why not get realistic and work out what do you actually need? And what can you legitimately afford at this point in your journey and get that gear instead and then work at developing your photographer's eye which will actually help you to produce better looking images and is the only thing that counts anyway. Trap two is babying my gear so much that it sits safely on a shelf but never gets taken out into the world to make interesting images because I'm too worried about it getting damaged at some point. And don't get me wrong, I always wanna be somebody who takes really good care of my gear but I know I have this little thing in the back of my head that sometimes would like to see the nice camera gear I have just in a glass case on a shelf. And that's a fear-based response and one that if I listen to it will choke the life out of my photography. I bought a few very nice lenses over my career to date and I'm ashamed to say that a couple of times those lenses sat on a shelf and I didn't want to take them down because I was worried they would get damaged and I took cheap gear out into the world to make images, in which case, what was the point? I had become somebody who revered the object too much. And if I'm gonna be super honest with you, this is one that I still struggle with and have to battle. But having a more pragmatic approach towards gear has definitely helped. Let me be clear, and I wanna be fair here, there is nothing wrong with being a collector of things if you can afford it and if it brings you joy. Some people collect stamps or vinyl or mint in box toys, and some people collect cameras, and there is nothing wrong with that in and of itself. But if you're somebody who constantly needs to buy more cameras and more lenses at some point, I think you have to ask yourself, what are you first, a collector of cameras or a photographer? Trap three was asking the camera itself to give me my motivation to shoot. And this is a more subtle one because it's an emotional one, so it's gonna feel right. I know when a lot of people buy cameras, they almost look at it like a romance. They want to love the object itself and they want that camera to give them their motivation to go out and take photographs. I hear a lot of photographers say something like, this camera just makes me want to shoot more. We all struggle with motivation, but I think it's very dangerous for us to ask the camera to motivate us. I mean, that brand new camera you just bought, the shine will wear off and probably pretty quickly. And camera companies are always bringing new cameras onto the market in a pretty constant stream. So what happens when that shine wears off and there's the fancy new camera out there that you absolutely have to have and this thing no longer motivates you the way that it used to? Are you gonna have low motivation to shoot until you can afford the brand new thing? I think we have to seat our motivation to take images somewhere else. Personally, I don't ask a camera to motivate me and I fight to keep the perspective that these are only tools and I try and keep my motivation for photography about making the images themselves, the actual art form of writing with light. That's what gets me up and wanting to go out and take images, not the particular camera I'm using on any given day. And having that more pragmatic approach to purchasing gear keeps me shooting, it keeps me from spending money that I don't have and it protects my motivation.
I'm going to guess that I'm not the only photographer who struggles with things like this, either being tempted to buy gear that I can't afford or babying my gear so much that it sits on a shelf and doesn't get used enough or trying to develop a romance with my cameras so that they will motivate me. For me, the answer has really come down to giving less reverence to the tools of the trade and more reverence to the art of making images themselves. Otherwise, I'm just like a penniless painter who doesn't really paint very much but worships his brushes. And that's why I can buy a camera without using it or touching it or seeing it in person because my process is just to go online to look at the specs and dispassionately decide, is this the right tool for me to do the work that I do? And if it is, I'll go online and check the images that other people are producing and check the footage quality and make sure that it actually is capable of producing work at quality. And once I know that that's the right choice, if I can afford it, I will buy that camera. Things like ergonomics and design aesthetics and feel are really not important to me because they can easily be overcome. I mean, let's be honest for a minute. I use Sony cameras and Ricoh cameras for day-to-day -day stuff, and neither of those camera systems are systems you're going to buy into because they're just such beautiful cameras to look at or they feel so great in the hand. Honestly, they're both a little bit plasticky and you have to get around the ergonomics for a lot of those cameras. And some people would say they're quite soulless, but as tools go, they are absolutely the right tools for me to make soulful work. I have no doubt that there are gonna be lots of people who disagree with me strongly on this one in the comments section. And mine is only one opinion but I hope my opinion helps some of you to stop chasing that perfect camera that's gonna make you feel a certain way and helps you to settle for the right tool and then to get back to making beautiful images. I was listening to an interview with a guitarist the other day who was talking about the guitar and amp combination that he'd chosen and he said, I just decided that they were the right tools for me but an interesting thing happens when you have the right tools in your hand. It's like they turn around and look at you and ask you, well, you have us now, what are you gonna do with us? That's how I try and think about photography gear now. I have to get the right tool in my hand, the one that I can afford, and then it's my job to make it work. It's on me. Personally, I'm not a collector of cameras. I'm a photographer, and I don't revere the lightproof box in my hand no matter how fancy the specs are, because I save my reverence for the magical process of capturing light in that box and making photographs. Before I go, I just want to thank MPB for sponsoring this episode. They're a great platform online for buying and selling used camera gear. In fact, that's where I bought this little A7C. Throughout my photography career, I've often chosen to buy used camera gear because you end up saving a load of money and still get great cameras in your hand. And when you buy through a reputable seller like MPB, you also get a six month warranty on all items for peace of mind. Or if you're a photographer who finds you're just collecting too much camera gear on your shelves or in your camera bags that doesn't get used, MPB will buy that gear off you. They will give you a quote, and if you accept that quote, they will give you a label to print off, you can box up the item, and they will even send a courier to your door to pick that item up, which will save you a trip to the post office. So whether you're a photographer who's on the lookout for a quality used camera body or lens because you've worked out that's the right tool for you, or you're a photographer who's collected too much gear and needs to sell some of that gear on, MPB are a fantastic option. I will leave a link to them down in the description. Go along and check them out.